In this quick video, I'm going to show a simple and easy way to tape drywall corners in this small room right here. So that what I'm using in this video is a pair of stilts, these tools. So this is a two inch Columbia angle head, four wheel roller, compound tube, and a 90 degree internal applicator. And then over here, I'll be using this tape reel, which just hooks onto your belt. And a knife. It's a five inch knife. I like those for taping. And mud. So in a previous video I had a lot of questions about mud consistency and I always said thin. Thin is the best. So you can see the mud consistency right there. Um, yeah, th thin, thin makes it go so easy and so little effort. So okay I'll get started. Okay, so I'll grab my compound tube and I'll just pop off that applicator, put it right there, and then just like a big syringe, I'll just pull in the mud. And the thin down mud makes it so easy to pull in. And a lot of people have been commenting that they have a huge struggle using the tube because it's hard to pull in the mud. That's why it's important to thin the mud down. This is kind of an awkward spot right here any more narrow there and I wouldn't have been able to do it. So you can actually go fairly quick like that, but I'm not gonna be trying to go super fast. I'm not trying to demonstrate speed in this video. I can go much faster than this, but I just wanna make sure that I'm capturing it all. So there are the muds on the corners. Now I take the tape and I just crease it and then feed it to the top and then bring it down to the bottom and I'll just quickly repeat this. So I'm going to speed the video up. Okay, so that just took, I don't know how long that took, 30 seconds, tape is on. So now I use the four wheel roller and I'll start in the middle. Start in the middle and go up and then down because the tape moves a little bit when you roll it. So this helps prevent the tape from creasing up. And another thing about the mud consistency that I showed you, how thin it is, that makes it so easy to roll it in. So I usually do one light pass and then I get back into the middle and then I push hard. And that puts the corner tape real tight in there. And uh, when you got the tape in good and flat into the corner, it makes it easier to coat it and it just makes an overall flatter corner. <clears throat> so then, grab this, start at the bottom, and with an angle head, I don't get right down into the bottom because you can snag your tape. I'll clean that bit out later with a knife, and then you just come up like that. That's a little too small, so I'll just I'll do right here, and then I'll wipe that with a knife after. Okay, so that's that's that. Um, for this spot, just just that easy. There, that's good. Okay, so now for the little bottoms that I talked about there, I just take the knife and I just go sideways like that. And it's important to get that while the mud's still wet and fresh because you want those bottoms of the tape 
pressed in nice because when the finished carpenter comes and installs the baseboard after, they always appreciate not having lumps and bumps at the bottom of the corners. Okay, so now before I hop up on my stilts, I will actually just do this here from the bottom. Just, just standing on the ground. Hey there, mud's on. Okay, on the stilts now, press it in like that. And I like to dab a little bit of mud onto that one corner so there's mud under the tape there. So I will say that there's faster ways that you can tape inside drywall corners. Namely, that would be using an automatic paper or a bazooka as it's otherwise known, but uh, for a small area, for example, if you just had a little addition for a single bedroom or a bathroom or even just a small basement or something like that, the time that it takes to set up a bazooka and the time that it takes to clean it out after, I don't think you would be really any further ahead using the bazooka on a small job. Especially with the cleanup of a bazooka because it takes a long time to properly clean out a bazooka. In fact, a lot of guys will say that they gotta take it back to the shop and pressure wash it or take it to a car wash, which uh, I'll tell you, a lot of the car wash owners, they don't like to see drywall finishers there with their tools. So, with these tools, they just quickly a few little swishes into a pail and they're rinsed and clean. And the heads can remove and they can just actually just go into a bucket of water, put a lid on the bucket, and they can just stay wet like that forever. So they're just ready to use the next time you need them. Okay. And. You don't have to do this part, like the rolling and the flushing on the stilts. It's just getting that tape up is when you need to be on the stilts. But I'm fairly comfortable on the stilts, so. And I'm gonna show you one more thing that I do sometimes that I've started doing recently. In just one second here. Okay, so see here, this is uh, the factory edge here and this is the butted edge. But over here, we got the factory edge down here and a factory edge here. So this is actually a bevel joint. So there's a bit of a dip in here. So what I like to do myself is I just quickly identify those factory edges. So that's one, this is one, and that's it for this room. And I put a little bit more mud on top like that and then I flush it once more. And that way you fill that, uh, that bevel. Okay, so Okay, so you'll get a little bit of little bit of uh, mud that comes over the edges. So when I'm up here on my stilts, I just hit that, and then to get the, into these three-way corners, I just do this, and that's about good for that one. And I still want that beveled edge filled, so just I'll just do that. 
There's a little spot there. There's a spot there. Get into there. And uh, I'll just talk about one more thing here in just a second. Just the, the last thing that I want to say in this video is actually two more things. Okay, so when I use a really thin mud, I don't know if the video shows this, but you can see that the tape has changed color. It's like a wet look because the wetness of the tape has, I mean, sorry, the wetness of the mud has saturated into the tape and the glue that was in the mud has is fusing into the tape and it's fusing into the drywall and it's creating a really good bond. So, um, some people who don't know have questioned about thinning the mud too much and would that affect the adhesion? I, I suppose if you thinned it down into like milk, um, when you dilute it so much that it's like a water, but just thinning it down to kind of what I showed, I've been doing this using it just like that for, for, for years and years and uh, I just do jobs back to back and never had an issue so um, and I think that it bonds better being wet because like I talked about it saturates into the tape and fuses it all together and then as for like the little dripping yeah you do get like a little spot like that and that and that and just before I go on to the next room I'll just get down and just kind of just scoop it up and throw it into an empty box so I don't have any issue with that. Plus these are construction floors and they get covered, completely covered. Well, they get scraped by me and swept and then they get covered. So it's just absolute non-issue about that. Okay, so yeah, this is this room here. Corners are done and that's that.